This is a, a generic operational amplifier, simply referred to as an op amp. The op amp is uh, this triangular shape object here. It has two inputs. One has a negative sign, the other a positive sign. The one with a negative sign is called the inverting input. The one with the positive sign is called the non-inverting input. And uh, the end of the triangle here is called the output. Now generally only the triangle is shown, but it should be understood that there are several connections here which are generally not shown on the schematic. Uh, one would be of course uh, power for this op amp, and there are several different ways it can be powered, but the most common is to have a, a positive supply, also to have a negative supply, and uh, in many cases, uh, there will be someplace in the circuit a ground connection. So these three connections, positive supply, minus supply, and ground, are typically not illustrated, but it's understood that they are needed in order to make the circuit work. Now, in the simplest case to analyze, and I think the one which shows the most um, insight as to what the circuit is really capable of, is if we have uh, two types of resistors, R1 going into both inputs, and R2. R2 goes uh, from the input, inverting input, to the output, and R2 also goes from the non-inverting input to some sort of reference voltage. So in this case, we'll illustrate that this op-amp can have three inputs, V1, V2, V reference, and an output, VO. There are uh, a few simple rules that we should be aware of to uh, understand how this circuit works. And that is that uh, this op-amp is very, very close to an ideal amplifier. So therefore, we'll just write down a couple of these rules. The first one is the inputs draw no current. So the positive is the non-inverting and the inverting inputs draw no current. Now they do that because they are very, very high input impedance. The second rule is that the output impedance is zero. So if we put a load across here, even if it was a very small load, it would make no difference. That's to say we couldn't load the circuit down. We put a kilo ohm here, we put one ohm here, it makes no difference. Now within a reason, of course, that's not entirely true, but it's true for the vast, vast majority of cases of circuits that we're going to be looking at. And uh, the third rule is uh, a very, very interesting one. These two are simply rules which, which uh, correspond to any ideal amplifier. The input has input impedance, the output has zero impedance. But the third rule is peculiar to op amps. And that is that these two input voltages here, the inverting and non-inverting inputs, are equal. So there it is. The non-inverting and inverting positive and negative inputs, input voltages are equal. Let's say that the op amp will do everything in its power to make these two equal. If we perform some sort of analysis and it turns out that they're not equal, then it means that the op amp is saturated or it is not working correctly. So to put this mathematically, we could see that the voltage at the inverting terminal is equal to the voltage at the non-inverting terminal under normal operating conditions. So with those three rules in mind, we're going to go ahead and see what this circuit is capable of doing. First of all, we're going to take a look at the voltage right here at the non-inverting uh, terminal. And we're going to do this by means of superposition. So by superposition, 
we can say that the voltage at this terminal is equal to this voltage times this resistor over the sum of these two resistors. And we can say that because we assume that the other voltage here is zero. So we're only going to look at the contribution at this point due to V1. So it's equal to V1 times R2 over R1 plus R2. But of course, there is a contribution to the voltage at this point from this source. So now we'll put this source to ground, V1, and we'll look at the contribution from VO. Plus VO times, and this time it will be R1 over R1 plus R2. And we'll do the same thing over here. We'll find the voltage at the non inverting input, the contribution from V2. So that will be V2 times R2 over R1 plus R2 plus contribution from V ref when V2 goes to zero. So V ref times R1 over R1 plus R2. So this is just simply uh, Ohm's law. Ohm's law. This is a voltage divider rule and a voltage divider rule applied from both ends and this is called the superposition rule and we could use this principle for as uh, many inputs as, as we have available. So now we're going to do something very interesting. We're going to apply rule 3. I'm going to say but the voltage at the inverting terminal is equal to the voltage at the non-inverting terminal. So we're going to rewrite this. Oh, I should have said this is a V1 here. We're going to say now that uh, V1 is equal to, oops, so V1 times R2 over R1 plus R2 plus VO times R1 over R1 times R2 is equal to all of this, which is V2 times R2 over R1 plus R2 plus the ref over R1 times R1 plus R2. All right, so right off the bat, we notice uh, something interesting here. All these denominators are the same, and so they cancel right out. So we end up with a great simplification here, V1 R2 plus VO R1 is equal to V2 R2 plus V ref R1. So now what we're going to do is we're going to solve for VO. So VO R1 is equal to V2 R2 minus V1 R1 plus V ref R1. And now we can divide everything through by R1. So VO is equal to V2 minus V1. So I brought this over. This should have been a V1, V2, R2 rather. So this is R2. That didn't look right. Over R2 over R1 plus V ref. And this is the equation of the output of the generic op amp. Now, notice what we can get out of this. <clears throat> we can get several different kinds of amplifiers. We can get out of this um, a difference amplifier. So let's just make a note. Types of amplifiers. The first obvious type is a difference amplifier. A difference amplifier. And that we get if V ref is equal to zero. So notice what happens when we get V O is equal to V2 minus V1 times R2 over R1. 
it amplifies the difference between these two voltages. Now, let's say that uh, we wanted to get um, a positive amplifier. And to do that, we would simply say, uh, let uh, V1 equal V rep equals zero. So what do we get then? We get VO equals V2 times R2 over R1. It's a positive amplifier. And let's say that we wanted a negative amplifier. Well, then we would let V2 equal V rep equals zero. And then we would get VO is equal to minus V1 R2 over R1. So here we can see that we can have um, some very, very interesting uh, configurations with a minimum amount of effort. The difference amplifier is uh, very useful if you have a very high common mode noise, uh, such as you might have in a, let's say in a recording studio or something similar. Uh, these amplifiers, of course, um, are just like any other transistor amplifier. Um, now besides that, in each case here, we've had V reference set equal to zero, but there's no need to, to do that. We in fact uh, could let uh, the reference be any voltage. So the fourth type of amplifier that we'd have is all of the above, plus a DC offset. And uh, there are many times when that is uh, quite a useful uh, feature to have.